All right, this is for Algebra 2, Lesson 21. And the main thing we're going to be reviewing, hopefully this is review for you, is that parallel lines are two lines that never intersect. Okay, they're always the same distance apart. I was trying to sketch them real quick, and you can see I boobed, boo-booed. But here's an example of kind of parallel lines. And here's the thing. They always have the same slope. We're also talking um, this section about perpendicular lines. There are lines that intersect at a right angle, and they're slopes that have the negative reciprocals of one another. And so let me give you some examples of that, first of all. And so if I have this one line here, you know, this is just an intersecting line. These two lines are not perpendicular, okay? They're obviously not parallel either. They have different slopes, um, and they just intersect at some random angle. I don't know. But for two lines to be perpendicular, they have to intersect at a right angle. Notice one would have a positive slope and one would have a negative slope. Okay, I don't know what the slope of this one is, but let's say the slope of this one is two-thirds. Okay, then I know the slope of this perpendicular line. It is the negative reciprocal, which means whatever this is, it has to be the opposite in sign. So it's going to be negative, and it's going to be the reciprocal of this. And the reciprocal of this is three-halves. So that would be the slope of this line right here. Okay, so they always have to be opposite in sign, and one has to be positive. Well, duh, that's opposite in sign. They have to be reciprocals. So just flip it, okay? So let me do another for example. I'm going to squish it up right in here. I'm talking perpendicular lines here, by the way. If one slope has a slope of 5, okay, and we're talking about two lines that are perpendicular, then the other slope has to be the opposite in sign. So this one's positive. This would have to be negative. And the reciprocal of 5, think about it, that's like 5 over 1, so it would be 1 over 5. So I can tell just by looking at these two slopes that these two lines would be perpendicular because of their slopes. Okay? So that's going to let you answer several of the questions when you get ready to do your homework. Okay. Now, I'm going to do a few of these, and then I'm going to provide you a link, because I've taught this lesson in Algebra 1, and this should be reviewed. If it's not, that's okay, but I'm going to give you the link, and you can watch the lesson to kind of get a better one. So I'm just going to do a few of these quickly. This is from 21A. This is number 3. And notice it wants you to find the slope and the intercept of a line that is parallel to this line. Okay? While passing through the point 0, 0. So I want a line that's parallel to this line, line that's parallel to this one, okay, and passes through zero, zero. Okay, okay well remember what this line is. Mm -hmm. This is your y-intercept right here, okay, and this right here is your slope. Well, remember, if lines are parallel, they have the same slope. So I know I'm going to use this slope right here. Oops, how about 3? Look at that, sorry. My slope is 3. And it goes through this point, 0, 0. Well, think about it. This one's actually easier. That's this point. That is your y-intercept. So I really can just write my answer like this. I could put plus 0 because that's my y-intercept, which is just the line y equals 3x. Okay? If you didn't realize that, what you can do... When you're given this equation, okay, you know your slope was 3, okay, whatever point they gave you, they gave you a really easy one, but whatever it is, remember this is your x and this is your y, you can substitute it in here for your x and your y to find b, because remember whenever you write an equation you need two things, you need your slope and you need your y-intercept, so if you plug a 0 in here for x, because that's what the point is, they gave you 0 for x, and you plug a 0 in here for y, watch what happens. Okay. That is going to give me 3 times 0 is 0. So I can see that b is 0. So in the very end, remember when you have this equation, you have to have two things. You have to put in your slope and your y-intercept. So remember your slope was 3, don't forget to put your x down, plus 0, because that's my b. Okay, so, I mean, even if you didn't realize at the very beginning that this is your y-intercept, you can plug this into your equation, you can solve for b, and then plug it in at the very end. Okay? Now, it says, um, that was 4 and 5, it says to graph both lines. Okay, well, let's practice graphing. Let me get this little piece of graph paper right here. 
Remember this line? The very first one they gave us was this. Y equals 3X. What do they give us? Plus 2. Remember, that's your Y-intercept. This is your Y-axis. So I would go right here, make a little point on 2. My slope is 3. Think about that as a fraction. That means 3 over 1. So I'm going to rise 3 and run 1. So I'm going to start right here. I'm going to go up 3. 1, 2, 3. I'm just hovering and over 1. And I'm going to go in for a landing right there. That's really all I need. If you need another point, I can do totally opposite. I could go down three, one, two, three, and left one. Okay, so there's that line right there. So I'm gonna extend it, put arrows on the end. Now I'm trying to do this and hold my phone so mine's a little crooked, so maybe you do a little bit better. Okay, my other line said it went through the point zero, zero. So there's my point zero, zero. And I know it had the same slope. So I'm gonna go up three, one, two, three, sorry, over one. Up three, I can do it again. Up three, one, two, three, over one. Okay, I might even want to do another point. One, two, three, over one. Get you a little straight edge or a ruler, but you should see that these two lines right here, they're so stinking close, but they should be parallel. I should have used a ruler to show you, but they should be nice and straight and never intersect. Okay, all right, um, let's do another one. Look at this one right here. This is still 20, what are we on, 21A. This is number six, and they give me this equation. They want a line that is parallel to this, but they tell me it passes through this point right here. Okay, remember this is your X and this is your Y, and they tell me it's parallel, so for lines to be parallel, they have to have the same slope. So since this line has a slope of two, my new line, you're always going to use this little equation, is also going to have a slope of 2. So I'm going to put that in right there. Okay, so I already know that. My slope is 2. I need to know my y-intercept, and I don't. But I know I can plug this in for x and this in for y, and I can find my slope. Excuse me. Ah, find my y-intercept. Okay, so y is 1. So I'm going to put that in right there. My x is 3 plus b. I have 1 equals 6 plus b, so b is equal to, move your 6 over, subtract 6, is going to be what, negative 5? So your final answer, remember you always have to have two things, you're going to have your slope, you're going to have your y-intercept. So y is going to equal, what was your slope? 2, 2x, two and you got b to be a negative 5, so minus 5. So that would be your equation right there. Now. If you're going to graph that, it says graph both lines, so let me pull this graph paper back over here real quick. Let's graph this first one right here. This is your y-intercept, so go to your y-axis and put plug in negative 1. So that's going to be right there, okay? My slope was 2, right here. Remember your slope is 2? I like to think about it as a fraction. So I'm going to go up 2 over 1. I'm going to go up two, one, two, over one. I'm going to do that a couple times. Up two, over one, up two, over one. And I might, you know, go down two over one. I just, for me, I need lots of little dots to follow. So here's my line. Okay, I'm going to extend it, put arrows on it. Okay, now, they also want me to grab this one. This is your y-intercept, so go to negative five on the y-axis. One, two, three, four, five. There it is. Put your little point, that's your y-intercept. My slope is still two, which is like two over one. So again, I'm gonna go up two over one. Up two over one, up two over one, up two over one, okay? So then here we have this nice line right here. And you can see these two lines are parallel, meaning they'll never ever intersect and they have the same slope. Okay, what about if lines are perpendicular? Look at number nine. Okay, number nine gives me this line right here. And it tells me to find the equation of a line that's perpendicular to this and it passes through this point, negative one, five. Okay, the slope of this line right here, I'm gonna put a little one because we're talking about my first line right here. That's what that little one stands for. Notice my slope's a negative one. So my slope of the line I'm going to want to use, remember to be perpendicular, they have to be opposite sign. So since this one's negative, 
This one would be positive. And the reciprocal of one just happens to be one. How boring is that? So I'm ready to write my equation. I know my slope is one, so I'm going to substitute that in right there. Okay. How boring is that? Notice there's a 1x. I just didn't write it. Here my y is 5. My x is negative 1. So solving for b, if I add 1 to both sides, I can see b is 6. So they want me to write my equation. So here we go. Remember, you always have to have two things. you got to have your slope and your y-intercept. We found my slope to be a positive 1, 1x, and my b is 6, so plus 6. So there's my answer right there, okay? Now, I am not going to take time to graph both of those, but you should be able to graph them. See that they intersect at a nice right angle. Be careful when you're graphing one with negative slope. Remember when you go up, you know, you still go up, but then you're going to run to the left. Okay, number 12 says to graph this inequality. Okay, we're going to do several of these. But here's what you're going to want to do. This is going to be the same thing, and this is where I'm going to provide a link is for these inequalities, because I think you're going to want to review this. You're still going to graph this, just like you always did. I'm going to do this one just right here quickly. This already has y by itself, so no big deal. Here's your y-intercept, so come up here, make a point at 3 on the y-axis. Notice my slope is 1, so that means, and I'm going to put in some tick marks, Okay, my slope is 1. Think about that as a fraction that's like 1 over 1. So that means I'm going to go up 1 to the right 1 because it's positive. Up 1 to the right 1. Okay, I'm also going to go ahead and make a few. Okay, when you do that, the only difference at this point is you have to decide if it's going to be a solid line or a dotted line. Since it can equal this, this less than or equal to, it's going to be a solid line. So I'm going to do that just the same. Had it been just strictly less than, there had this part hadn't have been there, it would have been a dotted line. Okay, now in inequality, you have to decide if you're going to shade above the line or below the line. You pick any point you want above or below the line. I like to pick the point zero, zero. Why not? It's nice and easy. If it, for some reason, if my line goes through that point, then pick a different point. Any point out here in space, just something not on the line. But I'm going to try the point zero, 0, and I'm going to see if it works in this equation. So notice my x is 0 and my y is 0. So where I see a y, I'm going to put in a 0. Where I see an x, I'm going to put a 0. So this is what I've got. Is that true? Is 0 less than or equal to 3? And I'd be like, yes, that's true. So what that tells me. I tried this point zero, 0, and it was below the line, and it worked. It was true in this equation. That means that any point below the line would work. So, very neatly, I have to open my pen here, I'm going to shade in below the line. Because what I'm telling you is that any point here below this line, we're talking infinitely, any point below this line that I would pick and plug it in here, it would be true. Okay, any point you would plug in up here would not be true. All right, let's try another one. Let's try number 13. Actually, number 13 is kind of a little tricky, so I definitely want to do number 13. A lot of things to remember on number 13. Negative y is greater than 2x plus 1. Okay, remember you want to solve for positive y, not negative y. So basically, what you're going to have to do, you could think about this, you could divide everything by a negative 1. You know, or basically you're going to change the signs of all. But here's what's going to happen. Notice this was a positive, or excuse me, negative, so I made it a positive. If you change the sign of one thing, you have to change the sign of everything. So it was positive 2x, it's a negative 2x. It was a positive one, I made it a negative 1. If you do this, okay, if you divide on the very last step by a negative, because that's basically what I did right there, was I basically divided everything by a negative 1, you have to flip the sign. So instead of greater than, now it's less than. So here's my new equation. So you got to be able to do that first. Okay, now we're going to graph this. Let me just dot this out real quick. So 
So how do you graph this? Always start right here. This is your y-intercept, so that's a negative 1. So go to your y-axis and put a little dot. That's your first point. Notice my slope is a negative 2, okay? Think about that as a fraction, negative 2 over 1. So I'm still going to rise 2, but because it's negative, I'm going to run to the left 1. So I'm going to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, okay? Now typically you would just draw a solid line through that, but remember we're working with inequalities. Because it's strictly less than, if it was less than or greater than, you're going to make a dotted line. The only time you make a solid line, remember up here, is if you have that or equal to, you know? So I don't have the or equal to, so it's going to be a dotted line like this, dotted, dashed, whatever you want to call it. I still extend it and put arrows on the end. And then I have to decide, am I going to shade above it or below it? Pick any point you want. It doesn't matter what point you pick out here in space. I'm like, hey, why not zero, zero? Notice that's above the line. It's just easy, so why not? So I'm going to tell my, well, you know, if I'm great at tell me. Tell me what point you're going to try. So I'm going to try zero, zero. Remember, this is your X and this is your Y. So for Y, I'm going to plug in zero. For my X, I'm going to plug in zero. Notice what we get here. Zero minus one. Whoop. My paper's slipping. So I've got this. Zero is less than negative one. Now, is that true? Is zero less than negative one? I'd be like, no. So look, remember we tried zero, zero, and it didn't work? It didn't, you know, it was like a big fat no. That means nothing above this line will work. So gosh, process of elimination, that means that everything below the line must work. If you need to, test yourself, test a, test a point below the line and see if it really does work, okay? 